Thanks, Charlie. Um, my name is Simon Snedden. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Northampton, and I'm going to talk to you for about 20 minutes today about um, law, about the skills you need to do law, about why you might think of it as a as an option. And I'll also talk about how I got to be where I am because it's a, a fairly non standard um, journey. I'm just going to share some slides with you now. Um, and essentially talk, start talking you through it. So the first thing to think about is why you might want to study law. Um, there will be those people who say our oh, law is, is one of the oldest disciplines. Um, it's the, the discipline studied by Confucius. Um, and for some reason, um, PowerPoint's given me a, uh, a drawing of Confucius's body rather than his head on the left hand side um, of Socrates and Aristotle. Um, so it's a discipline that's been discussed and so on for two and a half thousand years. And that's that's a that's a good reason. Um, for me, the, the reason the law is a good topic to study is that it impacts on everything you ever do and everything you will ever do from the moment you're born until actually until after you die. I was going to say until the moment you die, but even after you're dead, law still governs you. So all the food you eat is produced according to legal standards. All the clothes you're wearing right now, the uh, the building you're sitting in, the chair you're on, um, the whatever you had for breakfast, however you get to where you're going um, in terms of roads and so on. Um, there are some who would take it further and say, actually, the weather um, is governed by law, not in the sense that there's an act of parliament that says today it will rain, but in terms of reducing carbon emissions, which is a legal standard, uh, will it is hoped reduce the impact of climate change and thus reduce the impact of severe weather. So law is um, everything and everything is law. Uh, other people may say the same about their disciplines, but I've been a lawyer for a long time, so um, I'm immediately biased. But there are also some other reasons where you might think about studying law. Um, but these are reasons I think perhaps you shouldn't study law. Um, if you have a view, <coughs> excuse me, that all lawyers are enormously wealthy, they're not. Um, don't do it just for the money. Do it because you're really interested in the topic. And if you're really interested in the topic, um, and as I'll talk as we go along later, there are lots of uh, nuances within law as an overall discipline. Um, if you do it just for the money, you'll never be satisfied. Um, if you do it for the love of the job, you will be satisfied and you might make some money, um, which is always nice. Don't study law in the UK because you have a hope of banging a gavel on a desk. Um, so much of the uh, free images and so on that are online for UK lawyers involve a gavel. Um, the only people who use a gavel in the UK are auctioneers. Um, lawyers don't use them, judges don't use them. This view of, of someone smacking on the desk going order, order, order. Uh, we don't have that in the UK court system, that's an American system. Um, so if you want to indulge your gavel banging uh, passions, then law is not for you. And the, the kind of classic uh, preconception of lawyers is that all lawyers are ambulance chasers. Um, and that as soon as there's been an accident, or you know, you've probably had the phone calls from, from people saying, oh, you may have been in an accident, there's a claim. Um, don't, don't join for that, because that's a very, very small part of law uh, and doesn't represent um, the discipline as a whole. In terms of what you need, in terms of the kind of the skills you need, um, you need to stay calm. Whether you're working in any aspect of law, whether you're working as um, a solicitor or a barrister or in a company or whatever, there will be a lot of pressure. Um, lawyers 
within companies, lawyers for private practice, lawyers for charities, are involved in making some fairly fundamental decisions. And when you're involved in that level of decision making, people will expect a lot of you. Uh, and there will be a lot of pressure at various points in a law degree or in the professional training side of the law, so post degree level or in employment, there will be enormous pressure heaped upon you and you need to be able to cope with that. But not on your own necessarily, because teamwork is hugely important. Um, if you're working in, in the court system, um, you'll need to be able to work with other people. If you're interviewing clients, um, you have to listen to what your client says. You have to have that communication skill, both oral communication. So in terms of talking to people, um, maybe convincing a judge of your point if you're in court, um, but also written communication skills. You need to be able to use language accurately. Um, and that's linked to the idea of attention to detail. Um, to give you an anecdote, um, I worked when I was a student, I worked on placement for an organisation and it was, oh, my job there was to look at contracts and the contracts were about 150 pages long. Um, and we used one contract for the basis of the next contract. And at one point I missed a comma. Um, and luckily my principal, the, the actual solicitor, discovered I missed the comma um, because it was a list of stock which was being sold with the company. Uh, and had the comma been in place, um, which is how I left it, it would have made about 15 million pounds difference to the purchase price of the company um, or to the stock which the people were buying. So it's really important. Most, most of the time it's not that important, not as in terms of financial stuff. But actually, um, a lot of cases hinge on very precise points. And if you skip over the details, it could be that your client ends up going to prison. Um, so it could be a fairly fundamental thing. You'll need to be able to research. Uh, so if, if you enjoy researching, and you know, I talked about Socrates at the beginning, um, the Socratic method of, of learning is to unpick everything, to ask questions of everything until you get to uh, an answer. So it's not a case for legal research of just Googling something and seeing what happens. There are particular databases, there are particular approaches to research which you'll need to get familiar with. Problem solving. Uh, if you if you enjoy being given a problem and working your way through it, um, absolutely, law is a good good discipline for you. Um, so if you're looking at, uh, for example, it's been it's been quite stormy the last few days. So if a tree's blown down and it damage in your garden and it damages your neighbour's garden um, or your client's neighbour, you've then got to unpick who's responsible, what's where does the responsibility lie. Um, which documentation needs to be in place. So you need to be able to solve that stuff and you need to be able to solve it relatively quickly, um, whether you're working in practice or whether you're working elsewhere. It would be lovely to say every problem you encounter as a lawyer um, or as a law graduate or as a law student, you have infinite time to solve, um, but you don't. And that again links back to the idea of being calm under pressure. Mastering all those skills, to be honest, is, a, is would be useful in life generally. These aren't these aren't skills you need just to be a lawyer and you don't need them for any other subject. They're good, good life skills to have. Um, in terms of what you can do with a law degree, most undergraduates start their law degree thinking they're going to be either solicitors or barristers or lawyers more generically. Um, most graduates who finish a law degree don't end up doing that because there are so many other careers you can do with a law degree. You can go into the, uh, the legal profession as a solicitor, as a barrister. Both will require additional training after you graduate. Uh, an enormous number of MPs have a law background. Um, so you could go into politics 
uh, with a law background. You could go into the armed forces legal department, uh, the police. Um, I went into um, academia, so the academic side of law. But actually, because it's a well-established degree that's been offered for a long, long time, it has a really good reputation among employers. So graduate training schemes are really quite keen on lawyers um, because of the problem solving, because of the attention to detail, all the skills that you'll learn um, as a um, as a law student. But there are also a lot of positions which you can do with a law degree uh, where a law degree will help, but you don't need to be professionally qualified. So you could work within a charity giving legal advice or giving um, broad legal advice, not specific legal advice. Um, you could work within a company. Um, you could work as a researcher. You can go on to do further um, further study, either at postgraduate or doctorate level. Um, so a law degree opens up a huge number of um, opportunities for for all graduates. Um, and it always will. And to, to some extent, um, if you're thinking about doing law, uh, the law degree, the LLB, so the standard undergraduate law degree, is the same at every university in the country. Um, all universities offering a law degree have to meet certain criteria. So if you're looking to do a law degree, um, look at the other stuff around the core modules. So the core modules will be the same, criminal law, contract law, nuisance and negligence, um, land law, that kind of stuff. They may have different names, but we all have to cover exactly the same thing. What I would advise you to do if you're thinking of doing a law degree is to look at the university and look at what their skills are. It may be that the university has the world's leading professor in a particular aspect of law, which may be brilliant, but are they going to teach you? Because if they're not going to teach you, if they're just doing research work, then maybe that's not what you want. Um, is it a university which has a focus on social justice? So if, if social justice is the area of law you're interested in, that's the place for you. If you're interested in corporate law, then that's probably not the place for you. The universities build their own strengths and their own specialities um, around the core law offer. There are other ways into um, law as a profession, as, a, as an academic profession particularly. Um, my own journey um, was slightly uh, crooked, not crooked in the sense of being illegal, but crooked in the sense of not being a straight line. Um, so I, I failed my A-levels. Um, I wouldn't recommend that as, a, as an approach. Um, that makes things a lot harder. So I started out working as a fishmonger. Um, I worked as a fishmonger, then had various jobs selling televisions, um, and then worked for about eight months in a forest doing forestry conservation um, work. And that was complete chance. It was a, a chance meeting with somebody who was looking for people to volunteer to help him out. Um, and on the back of that, I went to university at Bournemouth. Um, Bournemouth's now changed its logo, but that was the logo of Bournemouth when I went um, and did a four year law degree at Bournemouth, which included a one year placement at British Rail, working for the solicitors department in British Rail. And I was all set at this point. My career was mapped out in my head. I wanted to be a corporate lawyer. Um, but then again, another chance encounter. Um, I was on my way to Chester Law School to look at the legal practice course there. Uh, came back to see a friend of mine who was at Keel, um, so up the M6, M5, big pun, and saw a postgraduate course there, which was much more interesting to me. So I did that. It was a master's in environmental law and politics. And on the strength of that, I ended up working for the University of Cambridge uh, on a project on environmental economics. And because of that, I came to the University of Northampton. Um, I suspect before you were all born, so in, in October 2000, um, and I did a PhD in nuclear politics, nuclear power politics at Northampton, 
um, and I've subsequently done another MA uh, in education. And um, having been in Northampton for a while, um, a colleague set up a firearms research centre a couple of years ago, which I helped to run. On the strength of that, a team of us created some documents for the United Nations. Um, I'm also currently working at two other universities as an external examiner. Um, so I've never gone into practice. I'm not a qualified solicitor. I'm not a qualified barrister. I went down the academic route. Um, I have been doing law on and off. Um, if you include the time I started my undergraduate degree, uh, and it sometimes is not nice necessarily to think back about this, but I've been doing law in one form or another for nearly 30 years. Um, and I've never been bored doing law. It is, like I said, because it covers every aspect of life. My, my research interests now cover firearms crime, but also I'm looking at uh, wildlife crime. So the smuggling of uh, pangolins and ivory and so on. Um, I am working on a, a, a textbook on environmental law, which should come out hopefully next year, maybe the year after. Um, and it's, it's a, an area of work which has kept me busy uh, and kept me fascinated for, like I say, for, for nearly three decades. Um, I can't promise you that if you do a law degree, you'll follow a similar path to me. In fact, I can promise you, you probably won't follow a similar path to me because of all, all of us who work in academia, all of us who work in law have followed different paths to get where we are. But as a discipline, um, I wouldn't change this uh, at all. I've been I'm, I'm very happy as a lawyer um, and I would I can't really recommend law as a discipline uh, highly enough. Um, that's slightly under 20 minutes, so there's a little more time for questions if anybody wants to. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the slides now because um, a picture of various university logos probably isn't that exciting. Um, and I'm happy to take questions uh, if anybody has any. Brilliant, thank you very much. So I'll try and say them in some sort of order. So what would you say to students that have an interest in law? What how what would you recommend? And is there any sort of wider reading or anything you recommend that they look at? Um, one of the best books I would recommend um, is a book called uh, Letters to a Law Student. Um, I, and yes, I am Googling it as I speak. Um, it's not an expensive book, I don't think. Um, it's by Nicholas McBride. Um, it's on Amazon. And it's, it's a series of letters to a fictitious law student asking questions about law and so on. Um, the other thing to do is and this probably is, is good advice for all students in all disciplines is read read a decent newspaper whether it's online or whether it's you know i think i believe some people still get paper newspapers um but if <clears throat> if you're getting all of your knowledge about current affairs from um facebook and twitter uh, it's a good idea to start reading a quality newspaper um, and maybe look at, um, you know, if, if all of your news comes from the BBC, maybe look at ITN or um, France 24, which does very well with awards or Al Jazeera news, um, because then you get a wider scope on things. And start, if you're interested in law, um, when you're watching the news, when you're reading the newspaper, start thinking about what areas of law the story you're reading might link to. Because it could be it's about the, the constitution, it could be constitutional law, so linked to policy. It could be environmental law, it could be uh, planning law um, or family law or employment law. Um, and there are so many different discipline, different subdisciplines within law as a category. Um, once you get to the UCAS um, stage, um, even before, if, if places are doing open days, 
um, if you have an idea for a particular institution, go and visit them. Um, it's always worth looking on a university website and all the admission tutors around the country are going to hate me for saying this, but look at the, the law section of a university website and if there's uh, an email address for someone you can contact, drop them an email. Um, we're in the we're in the business of encouraging people to do law. So um, if you email an, um, the law department at a particular university, they're going to want to talk to you. Um, they're probably also going to want to sell you their university. Um, I've very carefully not sold you Northampton. Um, I would, I'm more than happy to sell Northampton if people want to, because uh, like, like I said, I've been there for 20 years and I'm very happy. But um, yeah, I think read a lot, um, think a lot. Um, there are there are a couple of websites, um, and I'll, I'll send these to Charlie after the event. Um, so he can share them um, if that's possible um, with everybody. Yeah, that that's fine. It's perfect. I can send this out. They'll be on our website as well. So perfect. what another question. So what tips do you have for students to sort of help them stand out in the application process, whether that be for say undergraduate or postgraduate courses? Um, the best thing to do with the application process is to and I to be fair, I say this to my undergraduates as well. Um, is not to leave it until the last minute before you start doing extracurricular stuff. Um, if if you can, I mean, it's going to be tricky at the moment with COVID and post COVID and the regulations and so on. Um, you should be able to once courts get back to normal, you should be able to go and watch a trial um, in the local Crown Court or the Magistrates Court. Um, it's worth doing that because it may be, I mean, one of the things I discovered on placement um, was that corporate law wasn't for me. I thought it was. If you go into a law degree thinking you desperately want to be a criminal lawyer and you go and watch a few criminal trials and realise that actually criminal law isn't for you at all, um, then it's good to discover that early. So volunteer with organisations, um, any organisation, yeah, anything that you can find that is even vaguely legally related. Um, this helps, of course, if in your personal statement you say you've had a lifelong passion for law. Um, if you then can demonstrate that you've actually done something about it, that strengthens your application. If, if you say you've had a passion for law forever and it appears you've done nothing about it, um, that's not a great, that's not a great combination of things. Um, so yeah, try and get involved with as much as you can, um, even if it's not not law related. You know, if if you want to get involved with um, being on the committee of a of a sports team or a, a, a an organisation or a club at school or whatever, that's all good. That's all good stuff because it it demonstrates your ability to work as part of a team. Um, it demonstrates your attention to detail and the, the skills that we're looking for. Yeah, brilliant. And this sort of follows on from that question. So what advice would you give students who are about to pursue a law degree? So any tips for them once you get accepted? Once you get accepted, um, find out from the from the specific university if there's any specific pre-reading that they, that they want you to do. Um, some programmes will say here are four or five books. It would be great if you could have a look at them. Some say this is essential pre-reading. Um, when you get a reading list, don't immediately go out and buy everything. Um, look at it because if it's a decent reading list, I'm now hoping mine does this. If it's a decent reading list, it'll it'll draw a distinction between the essential texts and recommended texts. So. If there are two or three essential texts, see if you can borrow them from the library for a, uh, a week or so, because different lawyers write in different ways. So some texts are more, well, each of us as individuals will find some textbooks easier to engage with than others. Um, also, um, 
if you've been accepted, again, carry on reading newspapers because as much as I said law is about everything, um, current affairs links massively with law. You know, if, if you're here, we are in at the end of August um, in four months and four days, um, unless anything dramatic happens, um, the transition period for Brexit happens. So in four months and five days uh, will be post transition and the law will have to adapt. There will be different trading laws for different countries. Everything's going to change. Whether we have a deal or whether we don't have a deal, um, everything's going to change. So if all of your understanding is based on um, 20 years ago or uh, this year or now, and you don't ever update it. So I think getting into good habits, so get into the habit of reading um, and engaging with news and current affairs regularly, um, rather than, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm on Twitter. I'm in my own little echo chamber on Twitter because the people who follow me and the people I follow, we tend to believe the same things. Um, and look at how, maybe look at how you can get involved in, in things that are going on. The obvious one, and I don't know what's happening with that because, again, because we're, we're in the middle of COVID, is, and I'm an environmental lawyer, is things like the school strike for climate. Um, and Extinction Rebellion, organisations like that, that they are probably planning something um, from a socially distanced way. Um, I'm not saying everybody needs to go and protest immediately, um, but be aware of what's going on and be aware of what's going on with things like the Black Lives Matter campaign and the idea about um, decolonialising the, the curriculum. Um, and Human rights is a is a big area. So think think about how law in, in law and current affairs um, link together. But engage, I think, is, if I had to sum it up in one word, which clearly I can't do, it would just be engage. Brilliant, good words there. So just to finish us off, as I'm conscious of time, what what's it like as an academic? Do you have any tips for someone who might want to pursue a more academic route? Um. I, I love it. I mean, it's it's changed a bit in the last 20 years. Um, <clears throat> but so probably in order to teach, um, you'll probably need to go on to do a master's degree um, before you start teaching. Um, so it's well, to be fair, master's degrees are generally at one year long. So you'd have to do the same level of professional um, course if you wanted to go on to be a solicitor or a barrister anyway. But um, if you are going to university, get involved with the Student Law Society. Um, that would be, and if there isn't a Student Law Society, which there probably will be, but if for some reason there isn't, start one. Um, because at that point you can probably join um, the local young solicitors um, group, which again is good for networking. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend the academic route. Um, I like it. I've been, I've been doing it for a long time. Um, if you don't like talking in public um, and you want to be an academic, then practice. Practice talking in public because you can't really be an academic lawyer uh, or an academic without lecturing um, or talking to students or doing the kind of stuff I'm doing now um, and engaging with with people so yeah. Brilliant and that's what I said three o'clock thank you very much for giving up your time and your knowledge of the subject and thank you and if we've got any other questions I'll be sure to reach out and if you've got any questions there is a form on our website which you can fill out as well so thank you very much for giving up your time. Thank you for having me.